Number four. Yeah. Anything else? If you mean, do I want to stock up on a month's groceries? No, thank you. I'm old-fashioned about petrol stations. These are popular. You hang them over your mirror and they give off a scent. They're supposed to relax you for when you're tense. If you're suggesting I'm in need of automotive value, I assure you I've never felt better. I'll have a uh, quarter mint Imperials. Haven't got any. After Dark's nice. They have that lovely music on the advert. After Dark? What kind of name's that for a sweet? There it is. Listen. Slap into something. Smile. After Dark. <laughs> sort of Life is more exciting. I'm delighted to hear it. After Dark chocolates. You wouldn't believe our sales have gone up since that's been on. Car crime in the capital. We'll be speaking to representatives of the insurance companies. I swear someone's been creeping up in the night and making free with a fertilizer. Do what? My stock is growing. That is not the usual way in a motor trade, Ray. You buy the vehicles in the hope that you're going to shift them. Not so as you can put together a motor museum that'll give Lord Beaujolais a run for his money. Here, Arthur. Three. Like the descent into Hades. Where? Hades. Club me and your dad used to frequent in the 50s. Camden Town. Bit on the earthy side, but it was cheap. We only ever visited when we thought the business looked as if it was going to croak. Oh, well. When Harry Hawkins was around, we had this manor stitched up. He took one side of the canal, I had the other. Never the twain should meet. We knew what the going prices were. We had an understanding. I mean, no punter was going to take a bus across town to check. No point. The fair would swallow up any profit they made by shopping around. Alcyon days, Ray. Alcyon days. And we shall never see their like again. Now Don Gedley's taken over. Well, you can't give in, Arthur. Ray, you can only lower your prices so far. I thought this Gedley character was into banking or something. Financial crisis management, Ray. Cash flow correction. You what? He's a money lender. His rates are slightly less than the Vatican Bank, and he does open on Sundays, and he doesn't ask where the cash is going. Yeah, well, couldn't Harry have got a loan from the bank, cover what he owed, Gedley? He probably had no choice. Surrender the franchise or spend the rest of eternity propping up a little-known bit of the M4. I know which I'd choose. I need the bank. Right. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Well, I'll see you later, sir. No, Joy. Mr Gedley, he said he was coming right back. Yeah? Yeah. I did everything you said. Low key, no pressure, by the book. Well, let's hope he does. Be nice to get rid of that one. Yeah. Well. Knock it out at 17.50. Your customer will have no excuse if he comes back now, eh? Can we afford that? Don't worry, I've worked it out. Besides, I think it's time we turn the heat up on the locals and have a notch. Right then. I'm off to check Gedley's out. You think of all the years and all the hard work you put in and make this business what it is, Arthur. Tell you what, we ain't going down without a fight. Ray, be careful. Morning, Mr Carson. I was just passing, so I thought I'd drop in. Save you running by with the old man's money. Don't worry, it's all there. That's not all of it. It's only about 400 there. Yeah. Well, you owe another two and a half grand. What? That's what you owe, with interest. At current rates. But, uh, your father said... Dad's that been I... poorly. He's left me in charge and I want it all. We had a deal! Don't get jumpy. I'm a reasonable man. First rule of credit. Set your credit as repayment schemes they can afford. It's just the interest. And I want all of it. Well, listen, I can't possibly... Whoops! Clumsy. It's up to you. Look, all I've got to do is pick I up the phone and tell... I don't think about going to the police. They'll only want to know what you used the loan for in the first place. You see, my dad allowed one or two sloppy business practices to develop. Well, I'm just getting us all shipshape. Next Tuesday, then. I can't raise that kind of money. You'll think of something. Ooh. That was a close one. Hello there, can I help you? Yeah, 
Cavalier. Is that right? Well, Mr. Gedley may be able to go a little lower for cash. After dark, Arthur. You know, slip into something smooth. After dark. Extraordinary. You must have heard it, haven't you? Listen to the radio. No, not since the baker light went out the window. Oh, you tasted one? What? The chocolates. Dave, I'm surprised at you. Cometh the hour, cometh the cocoa fiend. I'm not concerned with the merit of that particular piece of confectionery. It is the wireless as a means of mass communication and arm twisting that I'm interested in. I'll take it the portents are not favourable. A G-Reg Metro under a grand. Less if you pull a face. I just don't know how he's doing it. And the old stock's like that. It's just not like a one-off. Plus, it's forever as far as I can see. Not like the little four-hour promotion we had last week. And it's not like Don Gedley, Arthur. I mean, he's bought businesses before, but he just sells them on for a quick profit. You never know how people are going to turn out when the circumstances suit, Dave. Yeah, but what are we going to do? Plunder the airwaves, Ray. Do what? You're quite right. Daily Enterprises has earned its right to a slice of the automotive cake, and I am not giving up without a fight. Well, Arthur, we're not going to start nicking stuff, are we? No, no, no. Far from it, Ray. I'm talking about a new approach. A hard-edged advertising campaign that will put the name of Daily slap in the middle of every household on the manor. Arthur wants to make an advert for the tranny. Even now, there are thousands of individuals banging up their blood sugar level because of a ludicrous little ditty on the light program about a new fruit and nut. What? Those same simple souls will be queuing up to buy a motor off the Daily forecourt by the end of the week. All we've got to do is think up a nice snappy ad. Yeah, but Arthur, that costs a fortune. You've got airtime, presenters, all that. Ray, the uninitiated may end up shelling out, but you are forgetting. The Daily is like a Boy Scout with a full complement of sweater adornment. He is always prepared. <laughs> You sound as if you're at a funeral wake. Well, he's not used to it, Arthur. We should have gone at the professionals, Arthur. I mean, look at this gear. You're bad workman, Ray, bad workman. Yeah, but what about this music, Arthur? Shouldn't it be a bit more upbeat? Huh? What? You know, get up and go. Dave, as much as I appreciate your efforts on the knob twiddling front, may I remind you, I once met Matt Munro and what he passed on over a couple of cappuccinos in Iwickham bus station about what's got swing you couldn't hope to learn in a lifetime. Come on, let's have another go. Arthur, I'm knackered. Look, we'll have a break in a minute and try and get it right this time because that's the last clean tape we got. Right, stand by. Ray, big breath and speak nicely. Dave? Music. <laughs> Thinking of buying a used car, Daily Motors is the place to come. It's a family firm run by a man you can trust, Arthur Daly, and its prices are rock bottom. If you don't believe us, ask Phil Collins or any one of our satisfied customers. But remember, put Daily Motors first. Cut! I knew that little pep talk would work. Tripped off the tongue of the treat, Ray. You sure about Phil Collins, Arthur? Yeah, of course. Phil Collins, a butcher, bought that caravanette. But what happens now, then, Arthur? Well, we'll give it a couple of weeks' try out on Radio What's It, see how many punters it pulls in. You might have to get extra help in the car lot. What do you reckon it'll cost us for a week? Monkey? You've got to be joking. That won't buy you a day. Well, you suss it out. I'm prepared to go to two grand. And don't forget, discount for first time buyers. Off you go. Right. I don't want that kind of business. And I certainly don't want you getting involved in it. I want you straight. That's why you got an education. So you don't have to do the sort of things I did. Well, in the way you're carrying on, you'll have enemies queuing around the block for a tilt from now till doomsday. Business is the business of survival, Dad. Cobblers! Look, I know you're trying to impress me and you're a good lad, but do me a favour. Dad, if you could just listen... No! And I want you to sort out all this aggro you've caused. Tell Carson he's got the usual time to pay the normal amount. And tell Arthur Daly the prices are going back to reality before you bankrupt us both. All right? You see, the thing about advertising, Dave, you've got to give it a chance to work. I mean, today's Friday. Now, it'll probably be Monday before the first waves sweep through the gate. Fingers crossed, Arthur. There is no room for superstition in the world of high tech, Dave. 
Genius and ingenuity will overcome all eventualities. Evening. Hey, Ray, I hope they charge by the use and not the day, because we haven't heard anything yet. You're not going to, either. I beg your pardon? Well, I've done some ringing round, Arthur. I told you to go personally. That is not broadcast spec. What are you talking about? That's best quadrophobic. In addition, they charge slightly more to broadcast an advert than you think. Well, I don't mind going higher. How much? Yeah. I've written it all down for you. What? My life. But listen, Arthur, I've got a couple of mates who work for a local radio station. Well, I haven't seen them for a while, but... Ray, do it. I am not paying that. Yeah, but the thing is, it's, um... Well, it's not exactly, uh... It's not exactly Radio 4. I know. Primitive equipment, only on the air at certain times. Jimmy Young, Brian Blackburn, they've all been there. That doesn't worry me. You want me a word in then? See what they can muster for a reasonable fee, on air, ASAP. And you better get on with it, otherwise the cars will be worth less than the cost of the ad. Right. Large one, please, Dave. No, no, make a small one. Not a word. Let me guess. The golf. What can I say? Overhead cam, 16 valves, and enough horses to keep Princess Anne happy. I like that one. Well, speed isn't everything. It certainly isn't. And uh, this particular model comes with a crumple zone. Outside, a reinforced steel safety cage with a titanium bulkhead, full impact rubber protection bumpers, and a collapsible steering column. If your no claims make interesting reading, clean as a whistle, still. You never know what you might run into, do you? Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm delighted to see the youth of today has the foresight to recognise that. Allow me. Thank you. Don't mind my asking, Mr. Um, is, is it the uh, automotive safety of your family that you're concerned about? I haven't got that far down the line yet. Nevertheless, getting the vehicular infrastructure in place so that uh, nature can take its course, unburdened by practicality, is very refreshing, very refreshing. Any of my acquaintances start banging on about the tearaway generation, I'll give them your number. Yeah, may I demonstrate the... Um... Kick down all right on us. What? Oh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, 0 to 60 in 12 and a half seconds, according to the more reliable tests. Of course, they do uh, err on the conservative side. Drives nicely, doesn't it? Beautiful. Hey. Well, apart from a diabolical liberty with my person, I've no idea. But he was a ram raider. Ooh, I'm, I may be doing him a terrible disservice. But when he'd hurled himself through a plate glass window in a nicked car, he's hardly in a position to quibble, is he? But the motor wasn't nicked. You were sitting beside him. A technicality. It wasn't his, and I hadn't given him permission to give the shop an alfresco aspect with it. What did he look like? He's a punter. They all look the same after a certain point. Green, and I promised to pay the bearer, stamped all over them. And what was he wearing? Suit, coat. Colour? Blue, black, I don't know. But, Mr Daly, can you give me any more detail? I mean, he, he was an average punter. 
averagely dressed. You must realise I wasn't particularly sensitive to my surroundings towards the end. I was making my peace with the Almighty. If you want a detailed ID, ask him. He had the perfect view as the motor went straight into his Louis de Watsit wardrobe. Yes, thank you, Mr Daly. We do uh, tend to interview most eyewitnesses to a crime. It's an old police trick. And you're right. Mr Carson has come up with a very clear description of the driver. Would you care to repeat your statement, Mr Carson, in front of my colleague? It was him. He was driving. Hey, hang on. Would you care to blow into the box, Mr Daly? said something, Arthur. I tried to. The decibel level wasn't conducive. So who was he, eh? Well, if I knew that, do you think you'd be sitting there now? What did he look like? Oh, don't you start. Nothing out of the ordinary. Average. No distinguishing marks whatsoever. What are you going to do? What can I do? I've got a report with my driving documents to the station and undergo further questioning. Yeah, but why is this antique skis at a point in the finger at you? Well, presumably he was in the same state of shock as I was. I'm hoping his memory will clear once the trauma subsides. Take it easy, Arthur. Go, Daddy! Go, Daddy! Go! Bo! Bo! They have a problem with English. They'll get through it a man on the street, Arthur. Trust me. Who are they? Well, that's King Master Mike and Cool K. I thought you said friends were involved. Yeah, King Master Mike. That's Mike or Mickey Evans. Chalky Evans, little lad. Who's the urban gorilla with him? That's Nigel Jones. Spotty Nige used to come to Battersea Funfair with us. Was sick all down the altar skelter. Yeah. What happened? He grew up. And you really think they'll put Daily Motors on the map? I guarantee it, Arthur. Here. Look at these flyers. It's their own design. They give it a full money. They make sure everyone on the manor knows what you're about. Who paid for these? Look, I know times are tough, Arthur. You can uh, give me the money back when we start shifting motors, eh? Well, you're a good lad, Ray. Go Daily! Go Daily! Boom! Ray, I feel subliminally moved. I think I'll leave you and the lads to get on with it. Are you sure? Positive, Ray. He loves it. Sweet. Carson has a claim up on his insurance and pays off what he owes us, and Daly gets further reminder, should he need it, that there ain't room for two car dealers on this manor. Christ, if your mother was still here... I know it's not exactly what you said. It's a diametric bloody opposite. Hang on, hang on. I know it's going against orders, but I know what I'm doing. If the police find out... Don't worry. Look, you've got to realise, sometimes it's hard to make changes. It's frightening. I'll tell you what's bloody frightening. You are. Look, I can improve the efficiency of this company 100%. Because you still avoid facing up to it. Because you're worried you might not be able to cope. That it might be too much for you. No problem. I've done it for you. You're my flesh and blood, Grant. I love you, I'd do anything for you, but you're not acting right. It's got to stop all this craziness. You've got to show me some respect. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, through the business. That is it. An end. The aggro stops here. Pray to God daily don't put two and two together. I told you. I've made sure Daly's well-stitched. Now, it's good of you to come forward, Darren. 
No, I want you to take your time, and if you see the person who was driving the vehicle when it went through the shop window, just tell me his number, OK? Your own time. The shifty git, number six. Get him to say Omar Gould. Stick some under some windscreen wipers, stick a couple on a lamppost or two. Your uncle's gonna be the top boy in the manor. That's magic, Nigel. Right. Sorry, Kay. Takes a bit of getting used to. <laughs> and once we've done these, me and my man will get off and finish the trials. Be cutting through the stratos by this evening. That's ah, safe. Sooner the better, eh? That's right. Listen, man, which side of the road do you want? Listen, do you mind if I leave you lads to it? I've just got to check something out with Arthur. I'll be back later, yeah? No so, worries, Ray. Later. Hang loose, my brother. And you, so. It doesn't look good, does it? Circumstantial evidence. What? Two independent witnesses finger you as the bloke with directional difficulties, and one testifies that you definitely climbed out of the driver's side of the car. Now, I should say that the evidence against you is about as watertight as it gets. The reason I was seen bravely climbing from the wreckage on the driver's side was because my door was wedged. And as to any other witnesses, I suggest you check their probity and any suspicious substances lurking in their bloodstream. Casting aspersions on the witnesses already. They usually save that for the courtroom. Mr Tompkins, ask yourself one question. If, as you suggest, I was the man behind the wheel, why, after driving one of my own motors at breakneck speed through a plate glass window, did I decide against nicking anything and instead hung around waiting for the pleasure of your interrogation? sorted out. You've been cautioned. You're still very much under suspicion. Like the Russian linesman, my conscience is clear. Nevertheless, you're not to leave the country. I beg your pardon? A statutory request. We'll need to speak to you again once we've checked one or two things out. Look, you can check out as much as you like. Until you find the lunatic with a penchant for drive through shopping, this crime will remain unsolved. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an empire to run. Good day. Mike, what's happened? Where's Kay? He's all right. See my mouth? Cut to ribbons. I can't go in there. What happened? Geezer took exception to the flies and decided to give me some back. Who was he? Dunno. It was Finn. Brown there. He had something to do at Gedley's. I was outside there just, you know. Mike! Look, it was only a bit of a lark. Only this bloke's is a nutter. He went wild when he got hold of me. And before he banged me in the mouth the last time, he told me to tell Arthur there's more of the same waiting for him. Right. You wait here. I've had enough of this. <sighs> Good. Yeah. yeah, I'll see you later. I've got to go. Can I help you, sir? The name's Daly. Ray Daly. Now, I reckon you've got a good idea why a good mate of mine's just been roughed up. I also reckon that you green-lighted whoever it was to drive my uncle through a shop window. Now, what I've come to say is this. You call him off. Daily Motors is staying. And no amount of threats or suicide cost-cutting is going to change that. Do you hear me? Loud and clear. Loyalty. I like that. Now, you listen to me. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been away. Whatever's going on in your business is nothing to do with me. And do you ever barge in here again without an invite? <coughs> I'll have my lawyers crawling over you so fast, you'll think you've gone down with some nasty disease. Now get out! Fine words are one thing. You make sure you've got your facts right first! All right, mate. See you later. Hello there. Jerry Parker, Cavalier, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's actually gone now, I'm afraid. We might have another at the end of the week, if you're still interested. Yeah, no thanks, Hey, mate. I can have a chat with Mr Gedley about a cash discount. Shame he was in our area. I could have introduced you. To Mr Gedley? Yeah, he was in a rush. I had to get to a car auction. Look, I'll have a chat with him first thing in the morning, all right? Yeah, if it's uh, not too much trouble... Cheers. Half a daily. Don't... I know. I think we need to talk. I don't think so. I'm not thinking of selling up. About your accident. I suspect I know who was responsible. You do? I bought you a little something to help make up. That's very generous, especially from a competitor. That kind of solidarity brings a lump to the throat. Yeah, well, no one likes to see liberties being taken. If you see the young reprobate responsible, I trust you'll give him a severe reprimand. I guarantee it. He's my lad. You mean there's another one? There are two of you. I'll be honest with you, Mr Daly. Since my other half made the crossing, Grant's all I've got. He's not a bad lad. He's a bit over keen. Mm, I should say so. The point is, your boy's on the trail. He's a bright lad. He'll finger Grant before long. Well, I'm sorry, but those who live by the sword... No, nah, that can't happen. I swore to his mum I'd see that he was the first Gedley to get through life without the slightest mark on his record. I don't want him linked with any of this. Well, that's an admirable sentiment. But may I remind you, I am prime suspect number one in this case. And in the absence of an arrest... Yes. I am going to be in serious trouble. Oh, come on, Mr Daly, what are we talking? Touch of reckless driving, few points on the licence, bit of finger-wagging from the magistrate, 500 quid fine. I also have my unblemished reputation to consider. Mr Daly, I'm asking for a favour. I want you to take the rap for my grant. He's had a rollicking from me. There'll be no further trouble there. Now, in return for your selective memory, there's the motor, which you'll notice is a more recent model than the one written off. In addition to this, I'll cover any fine you receive, plus 2,000 quid for your trouble. Two grand? It's merely a gesture, not meant to be insulting. Please, I'm not insulted. Come in. In the end, Dave, it all comes down to a question of morality. I couldn't help thinking about Jimmy Cagney on his way to the chair, pretending to be scared, so that all those other lads wouldn't suffer the same life of deprivation and aggro that he had gone through. It, it, it was a marvellous gesture, Arthur. You should be proud. Yeah, let's hope Gedley remembers it and all when he comes to pricing his motors. That is up to him, Dave. When you make a decision like this, you do it because you know it's the right thing to do, not because you're going to get something out of it. Here, Arthur. Right. Yo! Arthur Cooper State D! Mike! Mike, a public place. Here, Arthur, we've sussed it. It's Gedley's lad. He had just clocked him over at his old man. It was a quick look, but it was enough, wasn't it, yeah. eh? Right, Mike. Now, the eyes can pay terrible tricks in the heat at the moment. I mean, evidence my own unfortunate situation. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the thing but is, the thing Arthur... Is Arthur, I've just had a bit of a whacking. Some bloke got a bit raw with me near the garage. He didn't like the daily flyers. I got real close to him and it was the same bloke. Yeah, and a bit of checking turns out that Gedley Jr is looking after the motor side of things while his old man's in the hospital. Arthur Gedley is your test driver. No, 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 Ray, Mike, look, look we, we mustn't be too hasty about it. Oh, well, who else, eh? The geezer's been hell-bent on sending you under one way or another. No, we've got to be 200% sure about this. Right, well, he's wiry, fair-haired... For sure, oh, he's oh, low. No, 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 wait a minute, no, 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 now you mention it, he was sort of dark... And, and, and thick set and, and, and quite tall. Look, Arthur, I know it's him. And, well, I've, uh, I've told the police. You've done what? No, well, he's an Ed case. You grass, Ray. Arthur, the man is deranged. Arthur, believe you. Grass. I didn't grass. Where's just a clown? Anonymous phone call. Special circumstances. Oh, <laughs> my God. Arthur, it's for you. I know. You no, know, I'm on my way. Bit of luck, that. We were just coming for you. Well, I knew you'd need the insurance papers, so I thought I'd get them to you as quickly as possible. Well, I pulled a suspect. I got a tip-off from a chap who was at the scene, but won't come forward. But to get any further, it'll require a formal ID from you. It 
Could you get them to sit on chairs sideways on and hold their hands like that? Could somebody smash a milk bottle or something like that? Could, could be number four. Possibly number seven. <laughs> oh, sorry. For a horrible minute, you've forgotten our deal. You can rely on me. Slight communication glitch with my nephew. Appreciate it, Arthur. Sorry about that, Mr. Tompkins. A bit of shattering glass might have helped. Mr. Daly, because of your failure to identify the only other suspect in this case, and because of the nature of our own investigations, I have to warn you that we'll be charging you over this incident. Slings and arrows of outrageous thingy. Will I get a letter from the magistrate? Oh, it's likely to be more formal than that, sir. What, reckless driving? Amongst other things. What? Attempted murder, Mr. Daly. Attempted murder? When did they last have a debate on hanging? Oh, years ago, Arthur. Drop right off the agenda. Dave, please, please, could we avoid words like drop? It makes me feel extremely vulnerable. Arthur, they cannot pin a murder charge on you. Tompkins was winding you up. It is barbaric. I don't care what you say in any circumstances. You was always pro in the past, Arthur. Absolutely not, Dave. I, 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 I've never been able to understand the hang of my mob. You once said they shall get Judge Jeffries back and put him in charge of road traffic offences. Light-hearted ribaldry, Dave. The point is, none of this matters. It's not an issue. You've got to go back to the old bill and tell him it was all a mistake and that it was Grant Gedley beside you all the time. I can't do that. Oh, for the umpteenth time, why not? I have struck what loosely could be termed a deal with Don Colleone Gledley. You done what? The Volvo. The projected night out at Larry's State and Bodega Bar. Yeah, but Arthur, I thought that was insurance. Ray, please, I do not deal in optional extras. You mean Gedley's bought you off? Uh, sir, certainly not. He was merely showing his appreciation of an act of clemency that I had shown his son on an earlier occasion. Look, there's no point in arguing about this. What's done is done. You'll have to prove your innocence, Arthur, without fingering the lead. Oh. Maybe you could get one of the blokes who ID'd you to say he's made a mistake. I mean, once there's any doubt, you're in the clear. It's quite catchy when, when your head stops banging. Yeah, what's happened? He'd have shut down. They didn't give me the address. Well, it's the police, probably. The what? Arthur, it's a pirate station. The old Bill are on their backs all the time. The lads have to keep on a move. Pirate? First murder, now piracy. The plot will be looking for me everywhere. They won't, Arthur. I'll write to my MP. Say I'm an innocent victim of circumstances and will he fight my case to the highest court in the land? Yeah, who is our MP? God knows. It's him! Who? Oh. The local magistrate, he's our MP. We still got them who's who's somewhere around. Uh, in the cage, uh, under the ducks. Yeah, of course they are. He's a Sir Ray. He's got medals. I'm going to dangle, I know I am. You are not, Arthur, please. You're going to have to do something for me, Ray. Hide me. Arthur, what is the matter? All his family play polo. I'm a goner. Yeah, 
take these, go back to the flat and put the kettle on. What are you going to do? I don't want you talking to Gedley. I won't, Arthur. I just want to sort out one or two loose ends. So you know what's going on and you won't be left hanging around. Sorry, Arthur. Don't be long. He's going crazy. I am sorry to hear that. You shouldn't even mention things like that in front of Arthur. I was merely trying to impress upon Mr Daly the seriousness of the situation in which he'd found himself. Yeah, but attempted murder? Look, I'll have you know that certain evidence has come to light which makes us think there was something premeditated about the attack on the shop. What are you talking about, evidence? Mr Carson has remembered belatedly that as the car smashed through the window, he heard Mr Daly shout, You've had this coming a long time, Carson. Now, whether he meant damage to the shop or to Carson himself, well, it's difficult to say. So why haven't you charged him? You don't believe Carson, do you? And you know Arthur well enough to know he's not so stupid to get into ram raiding. Look, our investigations are continuing. It's a setup, and you know it. You know, but I find that quite encouraging. I beg your pardon? Well, you've got a man in the frame, witnesses, but you're still not charging. You're trusting to your sixth sense. Cheers. Word up, word up, people. You heard what the man said. Check this one out, because it's going to be seriously fat. You know it. I'm out of here. All right, OK. Oh, man, safe? Yeah. Hey, thanks for the lift, mate. Ah, no problem, mate. Yeah, I think I use broadcasting from here now as well. Yeah, here on a flat. Depends on the atmospherics. Atmospherics? Yeah, you know, flashing blue lights. <laughs> I'll catch you later. <laughs> later, yeah. Yeah, let's see you later. There's no way they can charge you with anything more than reckless driving. Oh, Ray, the relief, I can't tell you. Yeah, do you remember when Uncle Stanley came to stay and he was forced to remain in the loft for three weeks? That Sunday when he packed his bags and left, I thought, that's going to take some beating. But this... Yeah, but the bad news is, Gedley's little boy. Yeah? Well, at least I think it's him. Get the feeling the old man won't be that stupid. Why, what's he done? Well, he's brought the Volvo back. Brought it back? I didn't know it had gone. Yeah, well, I took it back over there. I wanted old man Gelly to know that the deal was off. Ray, I told you. I didn't speak to him, Arthur. It was a gesture. And? He smashed every screen on the car lot. Oh, my God, Ray. How could you? Well, I didn't do it. Look, if you'd done things my way, this would never have happened. Your way? What, well, hiding out? Look, if your Uncle Stanley can spend three weeks in your dad's loft with his claustrophobia. Oh, my God, Ray! Right, man, that is it. That is the last time I ever do you a favour. You know, the wrong kind of people. Why? What's happened? Oh, sorry, Ray. Your mate Gedley's just seen to it that we won't be broadcasting from the studio for a little while. Right, that's it. Ray, Arthur, this is all bang out of order. Gedley Jr. needs a seeing to. And if we hadn't allowed ourselves to get backed into a corner in the first place, none of this would have happened. Mr D, any chance of a lift at the preamp? Your boy has just smashed every windshield in our car lot. No way. And he's also wrecked the studio of a couple of good mates of mine. Not my grant. Right, then. So who had the keys to drive the Volvo back round to ours, eh? And I'll tell you something, my mates don't lie. They know who they saw. Get it. Go on, leave me. Are you going to do something? It's none of your business. He's a loose cannon, you know that. Get going, Daly. Somebody has got to sort him. He's a menace. Don't tell me what I should or shouldn't do with him. 
He's family. Family. Come on, you all, get into D. That's Mr. D. The batter steals on wheel. The car selling shots, that's wicked and wild. The wicked have two and a real good vibe. Come back, big back, get back. Here we go again on the daily second hand car store. Get there, you all. Yes. Check, baby, check, baby. One, two. Have no fear, we're back on the air. And as the man says, this is London calling. What's up? Sensory deprivation. I've read all about it. You keep tweaking up the volume till all you can hear is white noise. You know, I've got to let them stay tonight, Arthur. I feel responsible. Well, it'll only be till morning. You think Wally Clark and me rioted at the Isolde when they were showing Rock Around the Clock? <laughs> Why? They stopped us dancing. They were getting bits of ceiling falling on the finger dainties in the coffee shop below. Oh, if we'd known what we were starting. Yeah, I bet your dad said the same, Arthur. And I'll tell you what. Things don't change from one generation to the next. Oh, don't you believe it. Yeah, but think about it. We'll never crack it via the Gedleys. Carson's your man. He must be in league with them. Either Grant's put the frighteners Insurance. on... Insurance! What you doing here? Carson owed me money. Grant thought a nice insurance claim had settled the debt once and for all. Mm, you can't knock his thinking. What do you want? I need a word with Mr. Daly. Alone. No way. I ain't leaving him. This doesn't concern you. It does if it involves Arthur's well-being. I want it to stay in one piece, thanks. Please. Mr. Daly has stood by the bargain he made. I respect that. No harm's going to come to him. It's all right, Ray. Come on in. I feel ashamed even being here. I thought maybe you'd understand. Oh, I appreciate your predicament. Young Ray's given me a few sleepless nights in the past, I can tell you. His dad wasn't always around. I did the looking after. Of course. What can you do? You love him so much you'd give him anything. All they do is complain. You're breathing down their necks all the time. All you want's what's best for him. And you don't think your boy will come round? I think he needs, like I said, well, if you're sure. I can't turn him over. It's... I know. Family. This is not how I envisaged it, Ray. It's the only solution, Arthur. Carson knows who you are and what you've got to lose. But don't worry, I'm going to be right behind you. I wish you'd be right in front of me. No, it's no problem. The lads have got it well sussed. But remember, Grant's on his way, so don't hang around in there. Nothing could be further from my mind. What do you want? Please, there's no need for verbals. I've been through enough in here, including your front window. I'll call the police if you don't leave. Look, Mr Carson, there's no need for that. I am the bringer of good tidings. I happen to know that your cockeyed idea of me was for insurance purposes. Who told you that? The man who was driving, Grant Gedley. Who else would know? Why would he tell you? He thinks his secret's safe with me. He thinks him and me have an arrangement. Instead, I've come to make one with you. What sort of arrangement? I'm prepared to pay you twice the amount of money you did the insurance company out of, provided you tell the truth about Grant driving. Say you were confused with the shock of it all. Do this one deal with me and I disappear. Get friendly with Gedley Jr and you'll have regular royal visits. How do I know you'll stick to your word? Look, if I don't get Gedley put away, I'm in deep trouble, as you well know. My personal freedom is your guarantee. You toe rag, Carson. Oh, Mr Gedley, I, I was... I was I just... Oh, yeah, I know what you were doing. You're trying to stitch me up. You say I was driving that motor and you're in big trouble. We were merely discussing the price of a nice bit of Dresden that I noticed when we popped through the casement the other day. You got some brass on you, Daly. Trying to go behind my back. Don't you know when to lie down and die? Your attitude's pretty hypocritical, considering your dealings with Mr Carson. I know what I'm doing. I'm the future. Well, that remains to be seen. For the moment, I'll bid you good day. I'm getting sick of you, Daly. I want you out of my air. That's enough, Gedley. You should lock your back door, Mr. Carson. It's a terrible temptation. Come to look after the old man. That's nice. 
can do the old family in one go. Oh, please, think of the damage. Ray, I've already come into forceful contact with much of this room. No worries, Arthur. I won't even touch him. See, Grant, you're going to go away for a little while. Because you've been set up. You try anything funny and I'll have my old man onto you. He can pull strings, make your eyes water. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but uh, who gave you the tip-off that got you here so conveniently? I'm afraid you've been kippered. No way. My dad wouldn't do that. You're making it up. You've got nothing on me. You've got no evidence that proves anything. I'll show you who's got the power around here. You'll regret you ever heard the name Gedley. All that then, lads. No problems, Ray. Clear as a bell. Piece of cake, Arthur. You speak for yourself. I feel a couple of moggard on and a trough of vodka coming on. Latest, yeah? Yes, sir. <sighs> Very pleasing, Ray. Silly prices banished from the manor. London's most wanted safely inside, where hopefully he will realise what his old man was trying to save him from. Yeah, well, I better slap the old prices back on then, Arthur. You'll do no such thing. Don't you want them back to where they were? Where's your business sense, Ray? We've got to recoup. Bung another 500 on all of them. <laughs> right. Hey, Arthur. You better come outside. Why? Well, there's a load of punters. I can't deal with them all. What do you mean? Well, I reckon it must be the advertising campaign. Ray, your mates. They're pure gold dust. Yeah, and do that one the cash. Yo, the man! What? Bailey, what's happening, my man? Oh, I saw his car, so Is it all right if we cut a drag in the jag? No, no! No, that one's not for sale. No, 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 come on, no, no, no. no. Take it oh, easy, Mr. Bailey. Oh, the hat God. is swinging. Thank you very much. Ray, what's happening? Oh, easy. All right. Take it over by the street gang. So, what's the other Don't get me. I don't want to worry about that, Arthur. I've just done free. The cash and got a deposit on a soft top. Oh, cool. Don't do feel free oh, to get in. Oh, oh. Sadly, the price on this one is not negotiable. Nice right there, but right. it is top oh, of the yeah, rate. Young lady over there, yeah? Oh, oh yeah, all yeah, right. No. Listen, oh, man. Oh, oh, this stereo's bad. Yeah, nice don't pump it up, sir. Just remember, I promised no, Dave I'd help him with the quality control. Yeah, how long for, Arthur? As long as it takes, Ray. Look at this room, look. Oh. 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 Oh.